Hey, this is Sarah Huff from Reattached, and I am just answering a common question. What should you do with all your stuff when you decide to sell your house? Different people have a lot of different ideas about this. One school of thought is you should absolutely get all your crap out of your house, paint all the walls white, uh, move out, and have a stranger come in and stage your home with furniture that is cool and hip and, you know, in some way desirable to the ideal buyer of your home. I don't know, it's not my thing and I have seen that it can go very much sideways if your stager is not cooler than your potential buyers. So there are some staging companies up here that do an amazing job and they are of a particular style that no longer matches the ideal buyer willing to pay top dollar for the home. Um, specifically in Newburgh, New York, this is the market that we're talking about right now. It creates a problematic situation where you are working against yourself because if you are, you know, have granny style and you want to sell your house to some, you know, whatever younger, hipper person, it really is a waste of money to have somebody else with granny style come in and stage your home. Now, some stagers have a lot of flexibility, but in general, they're sourcing, you know, they have certain furniture um, and certain source that, that's theirs, and then certain furniture that they're sourcing from certain sources that is of a particular style. So in some cases it is counterproductive and you might as well just super deep clean your house, get rid of any sundry clutter and market it as it is. I also find if you're still living in the home, this is obviously easier because you know, you, you want to, you're currently living there, obviously, you know, you'll tidy up when there are showings, but life must go on. And if that's something that a potential buyer can't understand, there are probably other things wrong with that human being that will cause complications in the deal down the line. So my general advice is clean the heck out of your house, clean and tidy. And by tidy, I don't mean put things into piles. I mean tidy as per the Marie Kondo definition of tidying, which is get rid of all the stuff that you don't need or someone else wouldn't need. Think about if you were renting your house on Airbnb and set it up like that. Anything that is sundry personal stuff that a person wouldn't use if they were there for a few days, put it away in a drawer, minimize how many of those drawers exist, and go from there. As for personal pictures, it really depends on your comfort level in my point of view. Again, the prevailing real estate advice is get rid of all personal pictures. I think that this is smart in certain cases for very unfortunate reasons. There's a lot of history and research of uh, homes being sold by people of color under appraising, for example, and I definitely have seen firsthand and have battled out with some very racist appraisers who are functioning in this market. I haven't seen it specifically linked to family photos, but in general, there is this phenomenon, we're living in America, let's all be serious about what the situation is and be mindful of that. And at the same time, I have absolutely no problem with any of my clients leaving personal family photos out because I address those issues very specifically with appraisers. I see part of my role when working with buyers or sellers as interfacing with the appraiser head-on about any issues that could cause bias in the appraiser. I see part of my role in working with buyers and sellers as coming and communicating with the appraiser head-on about issues that could cause bias in the appraisal. Uh, this includes the neighborhood, um, race and politics in, in America, comparables, differences in quality of renovation, etc, etc. I'm working in a pretty small market in a very, very focused way, so I tend to have been inside all of the buildings um, that an appraiser would um, use as a comparable. And I probably know the owner, and I probably know who the tenants were, and I probably know the person who bought it last time, and I probably know that they're getting divorced and have been having an affair and you know whatever everything else so I try to give as much you know whatever um, as much relevant background information as possible to appraisers so that they have something to go off of and specifically counter any potential biases that they have coming into the market so for those reasons I specifically encourage people to leave anything out that they need to leave out or that they want to leave out because they're living in a home and at the end of the day we fight really hard to secure value for our buyers and our sellers 
specifically in this context we're talking more about sellers and at a certain point when you're working in real estate we are coming in this industry from a history of bias redlining skeezy stuff out the wazoo and at a certain point somebody has to put their foot down and say hey if you're a couple of color if you are you know not a cisgendered person if you are a couple that is blended in some way whether that's in terms of sexual preference race etc etc somebody has to put down their foot and say we're not taking the family photos out and we're gonna have to deal with the consequences of that head-on and that has always been my position doing this job of working with the reality of the systems that we were in and uh, tackling it head on to get good results. So, um, you know, that's the summary, that's sort of like a, a tangent that is also very relevant when I'm talking with people about how they should prepare their houses to sell, which is clean the heck out of it, tidy like Marie Kondo, uh, which, which means get rid of superfluous stuff, Clutter, minimize the tchotchkes as much as you can, but leave cool, interesting art, architectural elements, cool pieces that are conversation starters, even if it's not the style that a potential buyer would have. Um, and just focus on keeping quality things in the home in as uh, kind of like mid to medium minimalist style as possible. And don't sweat it about all the traditional real estate advice that uh, encourages you to create a homogenous cookie cutter space out of your home uh, especially when you're selling your home in Newburgh New York it's every one of these old houses is a special weird snowflake of cool things and issues and problems and renovations that have been done on top of each other over the years that you're just not gonna get to that homogenous white box feel anyways so you might as well embrace what you have rock it and let the chips fall where they may. And that's Sarah's hot take on preparing your home to sell in the Newburgh market. <laughs> I hope it helps.